Hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video that I've made for you. Before we start, please hit the thumbs up button, the subscribe button, and the notification button. Also consider joining by hitting the join button. It helps me out so much and I greatly appreciate it. If you don't want to join here on YouTube, then you could always go over to Patreon or buy me a coffee. The Linux Tube at either one of those. I greatly appreciate it and I'm humbled by it. Today's video, we're going to answer that age old question of anybody who's coming over from Linux or from Windows to Linux or wherever ecosystem they're coming through to Linux and they've never installed it. And that is simply that. How do you install Linux? Well, to install Linux is really three steps. It's very simple to install Linux, believe it or not. Um, there's not a whole lot that you really need to prepare other than you will need a USB disk. Uh, or Sorry, not disk, but thumb drive, a USB thumb drive. And it needs to either be brand new and blank or any data that's on it you're going to want to save because you're going to have to wind up erasing it and it's going to install the, the, the ISO or the image onto the disk or onto the thumb drive and make it a bootable one so you can boot into it on your PC and then install Linux. So you're going to lose whatever data is on there. So my suggestion is, is that you find whichever one it is that you would like to have or go buy a new one. Uh, the minimum you'll need is four gigabytes. With that being said, let's go ahead and figure out how do we find a distribution that's the first step you're going to have to do and then you have to burn it and then you're going to install it so the first step is finding a distribution and there's a web page you can go to that will help you out with that a whole lot and so this is what my desktop looks like this is the cool stuff that you could do with linux um this is actually a um hyperland distribution um or uh, windows manager that's on wayland so this is uh not for beginners this is actually what you will aspire to let's just say that if you're new to linux if you are already doing it in linux and been here for a while then maybe consider going and you know downloading uh zany's dot files on a bare arch install and you install them and this is what you get so either way uh, let's go ahead and find that web page that we were talking about. So to do that, we are going to want to um, launch uh, Vivaldi, which is our internet browser on here, one of many that you can have in Linux. And we're going to go to this place called um, distrowatch.com. Now, with distrowatch.com is basically a web page that is curates all of the Linux distributions that are available for you out there. Now, there are over 600 of them. Some of them on this web page, and they're all there, or, or mostly all of them are there, but some of them on this web page are beginner friendly and other ones are not. Now, before you get into any distribution that you think you want to based off of this list over here, I will tell you right now, be very, very careful. The ranking order here that they have them in is not exactly a appropriate ranking order. It's not always correct. Um, like MX Linux is definitely not the number one Linux distribution for sure. Um, I think the most popular distribution out there would be uh, Ubuntu and then there's Fedora right behind it. So those aren't even up there. They're a little bit further down in the list. Um, the other one that would be more popular that a lot of people are going to is Nobara. And that's because it's very popular for gaming. So, But the one that I want to focus on for people who are coming over from Windows to Linux is Linux Mint. Now, I did a Mint distribution video, uh, one of my first ones ever for the channel. So you can take a look at that one. But this one is going to be what we're going to go with and so to do that you click on this mint right here you find it in the list and then you go to this web page and here it'll tell you right here is their actual web page now we're going to the linux mint web page now on the linux mint web page and every distribution will have some web page or a source a source forge page that you'll download from it gives you the inf a little bit of information backstory on the distribution as to what it is so that being said 
Linux Mint 2.21.2 uh, is right here. You click on this download link right here. And then if you scroll down the list, you're going to see you have several different flavors, as we call them. Um, and the first one is Cinnamon Edition. Then you've got Mate Edition, or Mate, people call it. Uh, then you have XFCE Edition. And then you have Cinnamon Edge Edition. Now, the difference between the Edge Edition and the actual uh cinnamon edition is the kernel version and the kernel is basically the core component of what makes linux linux and that is the driver set everything included that the operating system is built upon that makes everything work now the my, the edge edition has a latest and greatest kernel or what could be considered a semi-rolling release kernel and then the Cinnamon Edition has a stable version on it. The difference in the rolling release or the Edge Edition is that it will have driver sets and stuff built into it already for more modern day equipment. So if you have a very up to date modern computer, then you know you can use that um, actual Edge Edition. But if you have just a regular older laptop or desktop computer, then you're going to want to use a Cinnamon Edition. So you go ahead and click Download. Now, that's going to take you to the actual download page for this distribution. So when you go down, you'll see download mirrors and they have some for the for anywhere in the world. And then they've got actual country specific ones. Now, here in the U.S., you have all these kinds. So you would pick whichever one you want. So like click on Clarkson University and it's going to drop down to want to save it now. You go ahead and save it in Windows. It's going to save it to your download folder. So now you've successfully found your actual distribution that you want to run you've downloaded the iso and then now you've got to actually make it into a bootable li uh, live iso uh, a live usb now the problem is that i cannot demonstrate that for you and the reason why i cannot demonstrate that for you is because i do not use windows and i do not have a windows machine in my home but i can tell you the tool that you need there are videos that you if you're confused on it uh, I'll, I'll explain it here very briefly but there are videos that you can go see on youtube on how to use rufus to burn a uh, a bootable usb drive or thumb drive so that being said to do this what you will do is download the rufus app you will install it on windows through the TXC or from the, you know, maybe in, in the Microsoft store. It may actually be there. I don't know. But either way, you download it. You install it. Once it's installed, you navigate, you open it up, and there'll be a part in there where it says ISO, either for ISO image or it'll say, where's the ISO that you want? So you click on there, you browse for it in your downloads folder, which will be the Linux Mint, you know, da da da, that downloaded. You click on that. Then it'll read it, verify it, check the MD5 sum, all that good stuff. And then it's going to ask you in another section to select the USB drive. At this point, you take the USB drive, put it into your computer through whatever USB port you have available, or if you have it on a hub, stick it in a hub. And then it'll it'll see it and it'll initialize that drive, meaning that it'll that it'll boot up the thumb drive and, and make it live and you'll see it propagate in there as what it is scan cruiser kingston whatever and then you hit write the iso that should be it i don't think there's any settings you have to you know mess with or monkey with in there just hit write the iso or execute one of those two i don't know but it's 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 pretty standard on anything that's going to do this and you hit execute and it writes it once it's completely done do not remove it do not do anything right click on the the, the icon down in the thing and safely eject that that thumb drive once you safely eject that thumb drive you can remove it from its thing or leave it whichever one but if you're going to if you use somebody else's computer you're going to obviously remove it and take it home and use it on yours um, so then when that's done, then what you're going to do is you're going to reboot your Windows machine because you are now going to be ready to do this ISO to install it. So then you're going to put it into your thumb, into your USB slot on your uh, plug on your computer. You're going to reboot your computer and at the BIOS screen, you're going to hit either enter F12, F11 for older computers. It's going to be F1 or delete and it's going to go into the BIOS. At this point in time, you're going to find the boot order and it's going to see that you have the USB drive plugged in and you tell it to boot from that USB drive. 
Now, once you get into the, that be your boot options that you want to set that through. You tell it to boot to that USB drive. Once you get to that boot, to that USB drive and it boots in, then you will be ready to install because I am going to show you on a virtual machine those steps from the, the grub menu forward that you're going to get, which is basically the, the menu that you're going to get on how to install this distribution. Okay, so I'm back at my desktop now and so what we're going to do is we're going to open up our actual virtual machine which is right here and it's going to open up a virtual machine now um not going to explain what a virtual machine is but it's a another computer inside of my computer so then i'm going to click the mint one here we're going to click open that one uh we're going to go ahead and we're going to close this window and then we're going to unpause this and we're going to maximize this. And then right here is where you're going to get it. You want to do start Linux Mint. Just let it go right there because that's what you'll boot into. And then it's going to start Linux Mint. And you're going to go into this live CD. Okay, so we've booted into Linux Mint. Now, from here, it's going to give you a pretty kind of cruddy looking, you know, graphical desktop look you know like resolution so what i like to do is i like to go in here and then i like to go to the preferences and then find your display uh know, maybe settings uh, i have to find it here actually let's just type up here oh right there display click on that open it up and then we're going to change that resolution to 1920 by 1080 and we're going to hit apply there we go. Now we have, and we're going to keep that configuration. And mind you, you're going to do this after you install as well. So now we have it. It looks nice. It's everything's looking good at, you know, so you can see. And you can actually test drive this distribution on in RAM. It's actually the purpose of a live USB. So that you can actually see if it's going to be compatible with your computer. And also see if it's something you really like to like to look and feel. If you don't, then hey, go find another one that looks like something what you want. Burn that ISO boot into it and give it a try and once you do then you'll find to click on their installer so this is what it looks like like i said it's got the look and feel of windows you know enough for you so then what you do is you click on the linux in, lin, install linux mint icon up here on the desktop and it's going to launch the 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 actual installer what we call the installer we're going to select english for next and we're going to hit continue at that point, you would pick your language. Here's your keyboard layout. We're going to click English US. We're going to hit continue on there. At this point, you would pick whichever keyboard it is that you have. And then you want to install media codecs because if not, then what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to play videos from like YouTube or Spotify or any of those kind of things. So you want to make sure that you click this. This is important right here. So then we're going to hit continue. And then you're going to erase the entire disk for sure. Erase the whole disk. Let it do its thing. You hit install now. This is a summary of what it's going to do. And you're going to hit continue. You're going to select your locale, which is going to be Los Angeles for me. Someplace it could be wherever you're at. Then you're going to create your information here, which we're going to put in your name. Like we'll put in Bob. You know, and then the username will be Bob, and then we'll do Bob again, or sorry, Bob, and then we'll pick a password, and we'll make it really hard, you know, so that that way, it's a, I messed that one up, and then make sure they are, and then do not leave this, a lot of them, some of these distributions come with login automatically, it kind of defeats the purpose of actually having a password, so don't do that uncheck that require my password at login here if you want to encrypt your home folder you can do that uh for the sake of this demonstration i am not going to do that so now we hit continue and now it's actually copying files if you want to see the cool geeky stuff you just click on this right here and it opens up this little dialogue down here that'll tell you what's going on in the background if you don't like the cool geeky stuff hey click it again and it goes away Okay, as you can see, it is now completely done. So we're going to hit restart. As it's doing right now. And see, we're loading into it much, much faster already. 
So now we're going to type in Bob. I almost forgot what the username is because that's not usually what I put in. Oh, no, sorry, our password. And once again, you get this, you're, you're in it now. So you have completely installed Linux on an actual hard hardware on a computer and so there you go now you are ready this is it this is something you want to read always read these little welcome windows that you get they give you plenty of information on the distribution and what you want to do with it and uh you know documentation links and all the important stuff all the goodness is there so make sure you look at that and that is exactly how easy it is to install linux on a computer all by yourself no geek squad needed um, just a little bit of typing savvy and being able to watch a YouTube video. Until then, I tell you guys, keep doing what you do. Keep on linking. Stay safe. Stay blessed. And above all, I will see you in the very next one.